In this lesson, we'll continue to build our syntax knowledge. We are one step away from covering the essentials, and then we'll be able to dive into more interesting programming tasks. The next topic on our agenda are arithmetic operators. The addition and subtraction signs are straightforward to use. Technically speaking, in the equation you see here, 1 and 2 are called operands, while in the next one, the operands are 3 and 5. The plus and minus signs are called operators, and given they also represent arithmetic operations, they can be called arithmetic operators. Division is more interesting. If we want to divide 15 by 3, we will need to use the forward slash sign. What will happen if we try to divide 16 by 3? 5 again. Yes, the output was 5 because in Python 2, the quotient is an integer by default. Mathematically, if we divide the integer 16 by 3, we will obtain a quotient of 5 and a remainder of 1. If we use real numbers or floats, the float 16 divided by 3 will result in a float value of 5.33. Therefore, we obtained as a quotient the integer 5 and no information regarding the remainder of the division of 16 by 3. This is one of the few substantial differences between Python 2 and 3. In Python 3, you would immediately get 5.33 as an answer, or a float, because the software will understand your first number was a float value. To avoid this, when we use Python 2, we should look for the quotient of the float 16 divided by 3, and not of the integer 16 divided by 3. So, we should either transform the number into a float, or type it as a float directly. See? This is the correct answer. Now, let's obtain the remainder of the division of 16 by 3. How can we make Python produce 1 as an output in this cell? The operator that can help us is the percentage sign. I'll type 16, percentage sign, 3, and when I execute the command, I will obtain the remainder. The answer we received is 1. Good. Multiplication. As usual, we can use the star sign when we want to multiply. For example, 5 star 3 will lead us to an output of 15. For the record, you can assign any arithmetic operation to a variable. If we assign 5 times 3 to the variable x, and then we call x, we will obtain 15 again. Great! How could you calculate 5 to the power of 3? By using the double star operator. Type 5, 2 stars, 3, and... Here you go, 125. Easy, right? Okay, basically, this covers arithmetic operators. Stay tuned for the next lesson, where we will explore some other useful operators. Thank you for watching. You know the right way to interpret the equal sign when programming is a sign or bind to. For instance, assign 5 to the power of 3 to the variable y. Bind 5 to the power of 3 to y. This means from that moment for the computer, y will be equal to 125. Here's what will happen when you double the equality sign. Let me type y double equality sign 125. The correct way to read this code is y equals 125. When you run this command, the computer will assume you have requested an answer to the question, is y really equal to 125? This is why, after the execution of this cell, the machine will respond with a Boolean value. It will either return true or false. Let's check our output when we state y is equal to 126. Great! The machine replied with false because 125 and 126 are different numbers. Wonderful! Remember, when you mean equality between values and not assignment of values in Python, you'll need the double equality sign. Anytime you use it, you'll obtain one of the two possible outcomes, true or false. In our next video, we will show you how variables can be reassigned in Python. Thank you for watching! Okay. Let me explain a programming concept that is valid for other programming languages as well. If I assign the value of 1 to a variable z, 
my output after executing Z will be 1. After that, if I assign 3 to the same variable Z, Z will be equal to 3, not 1 anymore. How come? Well, the order of the commands matters. Initially, we said Z will be equal to 1, and that was true, until we changed the value to 3. For the computer, from that moment on, Z is not equal to 1, and it will continue to be 3. As proof, see this. If we add 5 to Z, we will get 8. Not 1 plus 5, which is equal to 6. Then, if we suddenly decide Z is equal to 7, Z will not be equal to 1 or 3 anymore. Python reassigns values to its objects. Therefore, remember the last command is valid and older commands are overwritten. Thanks for watching. Especially when your code becomes longer, and by longer, I mean containing tens or hundreds of rows, it becomes difficult to understand how your work has been structured because there are too many lines. What you could do in these situations is leave a comment. Comments are sentences not executed by the computer. It doesn't read them as instructions. The trick is to put a hash sign at the beginning of each line you would like to insert as a comment. I'll improvise with a random sentence. It is just a comment and not a code. Execute with Shift and Enter. When you run this cell, there will be no output because the comment does not count as code. Let's add code. Print, open parentheses, 7, comma, 2, close parentheses. Execute with Shift and Enter. Yes, precisely. We got 7 and 2 on the same line, and the comment row marked with a hashtag produced no output. It remained visible only to the programmer. The computer executed the print command only. If we would like to leave a comment on two lines, don't forget to place the hash sign at the beginning of each line. These two will be comments. Everything seems to work. Great! Now, we're going to repeat the same lecture adapted to Python 2 code. Going through it can be really helpful to those of you working with that version of the language. You can use it both as an exercise and as an opportunity to learn about the small but not unimportant differences between Python 2 and 3. Enjoy! Especially when your code becomes longer, and by longer, I mean containing tens or hundreds of rows, it becomes difficult to understand how your work has been structured because there are too many lines. What you could do in these situations is leave a comment. Comments are sentences not executed by the computer. It doesn't read them as instructions. The trick is to put a hash sign at the beginning of each line you would like to insert as a comment. I'll improvise with a random sentence. It is just a comment and not a code. Execute with Shift and Enter. When you run this cell, there will be no output because the comment does not count as code. Let's add code. Print 7 and 2 on the same line. Execute with Shift and Enter. Yes, precisely. We got 7 and 2, and the comment row marked with the hashtag produced no output. It remained visible only to the programmer. The computer executed the print command only. If we would like to leave a comment on two lines, don't forget to place the hash sign at the beginning of each line. These two will be comments. Everything seems to work. Okay, perfect. I'd like to show you a neat trick that will be extremely valuable when you become an advanced Python programmer and work with large amounts of code. This is a very handy feature, so please pay attention. Sometimes the length of the cell will not suffice for you to finish your line. Lines of code could get long. Or, just for the matter of organizing your code, you might prefer to send part of the code to the next line. So, 2.0 times 1.5 plus 5 could be written in two lines, and the machine could still read it as one command. This could be achieved by putting a backslash where you would like the end of the first line to be. 
It indicates you will continue the same command on a new line. Cool, right? All right, great. Let's look at another important concept that will help us a great deal when working in Python. Indexing. This is a technique we'll use frequently later in the course, especially when we focus on Python's application in the world of finance. So, here's an example of how indexing works. The word Friday is written here, right? Is it possible to extract the letter D? Yes, we can do that by using square brackets, and within them, we should specify the position of the letter we would like to be extracted. A very important thing you should remember is that in Python, we count from 0, not from 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That's why I'll ask for the fourth letter, D, by writing 3 here. See? And we obtain the letter D. Had we put 4, we would have obtained the letter A. This is the syntax in this occasion. Square brackets right after the word, or the string of characters, if you wish, and a number indicating the position of interest. This is how indexing works in Python. Thanks for watching. The next concept for programming in Python we will see here is fundamental. It is called indentation. The way you apply it in practice is important, as this will be the only way to communicate your ideas to the machine properly. Here is what I mean. Let's define a function, 5 that takes as an argument an unknown x. It will be a simple one. x will be reassigned the value of 5, and the function will return the value of 5 for us. Please note that I am using an indent. Now, we can print the result of 5 with an argument of 3. Nothing happened. Why? because printing 5 of 3 is within a function, so it will be executed only when the function is applied. If we place print on a new line instead, aligned to the def command, the output will be different. How come? The print command is executed on its own, not as part of the 5 function. Def and print form two separate and written in this way, clearly distinguishable blocks of code or blocks of commands. It makes sense to use indentation, doesn't it? Everything that regards the function is written with one indentation to the inside. Once you decide to code something else, start on a new line with no indentation. The blocks of code are more visible, and this clarifies the logic you are applying to solve your problem. Great! Now, we're going to repeat the same lecture adapted to Python 2 code. Going through it can be really helpful to those of you working with that version of the language. You can use it both as an exercise and as an opportunity to learn about the small but not unimportant differences between Python 2 and 3. Enjoy! The next concept for programming in Python we will see here is fundamental. It is called indentation. The way you apply it in practice is important, as this will be the only way to communicate your ideas to the machine properly. Here is what I mean. Let's define a function, 5, that takes as an argument an unknown x. It will be a simple one. x will be reassigned the value of 5, and the function will return the value of 5 for us. Please note that I am using an indent. Now, we can print the result of 5 with an argument of 3. Nothing happened. Why? because printing 5 of 3 is within a function, so it will be executed only when the function is applied. If we place print on a new line instead, aligned to the def command, the output will be different. How come? The print command is executed on its own, not as part of the 5 function. Def and print form two separate and written in this way, clearly distinguishable blocks of code or blocks of commands. It makes sense to use indentation, doesn't it? Everything that regards the function is written with one indentation to the inside. Once you decide to code something else, start on a new line with no indentation. The blocks of code are more visible, and this clarifies the logic you are applying to solve your problem.
Working with functions is interesting, right? Keep up the good work, and I promise to come back to that soon.